<laughs> I remember in WWE in Japan, we all went out one night. This is when, like, the fucking goon posse was just wanting to sit around and call people to the bar and bully them and all this other bullshit. So I didn't want no part of that crap. So I wanted to avoid it like the plague. So we went to Animal. Me, Tank, Jillian, and, like, Virgil and somebody else at Animal, man. I'd already been to, uh... Rapungi? No. Wait, where, where were you? Yeah, Ribera. I'd already been to Ribera a couple times. None of them had. So I went to Animal. I was like, look, man. They won't say anything to you if you take us all out, dude. I don't want to stay around this hotel because nothing good's going to... This is the night they almost killed Justin Roberts, and we'll get into that. <laughs> but, uh, Animal took us all to Ribera and got us all hooked up. And as we're coming back, I'm like, man, I hope those guys ain't down in the lobby, dude. And, uh, because it was like Benoit, JBL, I think Taker was floating around, too. But Taker, he, uh, Taker's Taker. He's untouchable. I liked that. Undertaker was always cool to me, dude. But it was all—I always felt uneasy around Undertaker. He's like the fucking Godfather, man. He's the guy, dude. He is. Everybody says it. He is, dude. I mean, he's—he commands the ultimate respect. He's the HNIC. He is. So I mean, even when I was around him, like I would never make eye contact with him. But I think he liked my work. I thought—I th think he was thought I was a good guy. But when I would see JBL and fucking anywhere or like Bob, you know, I don't think Bob was there. Especially Benoit, after you've been drinking, I'd be man. I want to avoid this like the plague. So we're going back to the hotel, and Animal goes, "Fuck that!" If anybody says anything, you say say you're with me. I'm like, "All right, dude, let's go." And we got in, <coughs> and this will get into. It. They had been harassing Justin Roberts, the ring announcer, on this trip. Justin Roberts' crime, you might ask. Well, he couldn't throw T-shirts into the crowd. Mm -hmm. I shit you not. They got on Justin Roberts because they asked him to throw t-shirts in the crowd, and he told him, look, I'll throw them the best I can, but I throw like a girl. I throw like shit. I'm not an athlete. That's all he needed to hear. They were getting ready to destroy him. <laughs> we go back to the hotel. Everybody goes to the rooms, and somehow me, Tank, and Jillian got caught in the hall hallway by JBL and Benoit. And the only things that they were missing were literal, like, fucking pitchforks and torches, dude. And they're hunting for Justin Roberts. <laughs> and I remember them finding his hotel room. And I just remember, I mean, God, I hate speaking ill of the dead. I remember Benoit knocking on his door so violently that I was sitting there praying to myself, please do not open this door, Justin. If you're in there, please don't open this door. I don't think, I don't know what would happen. They would have fucked him a little bit, but it was so surreal to see, dude. It would take the littlest, I think it was because of boredom and just, you know, whatever. Yeah. But... Some of it was just so unbelievable. I was like, Jesus Christ, man. I was like, just let's go to bed. You know, I, I, cause that's something I never got into. I'm very proud of the fact that I never bullied anybody. I never antagonized them. I never, like, got in arguments. I just never did that shit, dude. And I just uh, I just remember that night like it was yesterday, man. I, I'll never forget the pounding, how loud it was on that door and that night. And I just kept saying, please do not let this door break down. Or do not let him open it. And then I think, like, one time they stole his passport when they were in England or something. So he couldn't get home oh, man. and all that shit. And, yeah, it was horrible, dude. Now, Justin's a great guy, too. Now, after that happens... If you're in Justin's shoes, do you go to management, or you, that's a no-no? You just got to take it, I guess. And I remember the next day, I was all flying home, and he was hiding in the airport. Like, we we're all getting ready to board the group flight, and nobody could find him. Not until, like, the last minute we were about to get on. Because he didn't I mean, uh, Yeah, and that's only a tenth of, like, what Muhammad Hassan got. I mean, Muhammad Hassan got way worse, I heard, Speaking of criminal, is there, I don't know, segue if you want to say that, Chris Benoit. You got to work with the man. You've seen him outside the ring. You talked about him just a couple minutes ago. What are your thoughts on the entire... Tragedy. <coughs> Chris Benoit, the professional, is, along with Eddie Guerrero, the single greatest, the second, you know, one and two, the greatest wrestler I was ever in the ring with. I would call nothing with Chris. He would let me call the matches, all of it. We'd go in back and forth, heavy hitting. Uh, I always felt like I earned my money with Chris. He treated me like a professional. Outside of the ring, I'm going to say this, it might not be popular, and apparently some of my co-workers or constituents, they're no longer on earth because they don't actually think the same way. I think Chris Benoit is one of the most vile human beings who's ever been in the professional wrestling industry. Right? I mean, <laughs> I don't know what Jeffrey Dahmer and other serial killers did before they killed people, but they're remembered as killers. Chris Benoit murdered his wife and his child. How in the world can I sit here and talk about this guy giving great hip tosses and arm drags and flying headbutts and then kind of just say, oh, you know, but he also killed his wife. I've had people ask me when he was going to get in the Hall of Fame. Me and Stevie were talking about this. We're like, dude, if he gets in the Hall of Fame, fuck it, we're shoe-ins. Huh. 
<laughs> you should be in the Hall of Fame before Chris. Let me let me reiterate this for the fans at home. Chris Benoit killed his wife and child. I loved Chris as a competitor. I liked him as a man. We all went to him. We all looked out. It was not steroids. Steroids do not make you go nuts. Let me ask you a question. How many bodybuilders are on death row for murder? None that I know of. How many professional athletes are on death row for murder? I don't know a whole lot of them. Steroids do not make you go crazy. They didn't fit him into a fucking fit of rage. I think his brain had been turned to mush. I don't know. Uh, maybe some bipolarism. Chris drank. When he drank, he got to be an angry kind of dude. I didn't really like being around him. And there was a couple times he said and did some shit even towards my way that the next day or so I'd say something to him. I'd be like, man, what the fuck was that? I don't, I don't remember that Nova. I'm sorry. And he didn't remember it. <laughs> uh, towards the end when I booked him for Six Flags for OBW, he actually, I remember speaking to him a couple days literally before the incident, and he told me, he's like, man, you should quit this job and come back on the roster, dude. We fucking need you bad. I'm like, well, you know, I like what I'm doing and shit, and <laughs> I always, I made sure that people had him in OBW and picked him up and drove him around, but uh, I, I was in Florida going down to FCW. We were moving it down there, and Johnny called me and said, Hey, man, I just want to call you before everybody else hears about it. Uh, they just found Chris and his whole family dead in their house. And I was with Joey Gomez. And I hung up the phone. I said, What? And I looked at Joe, and I told him, Joe Gomez goes, What? And I said, Dude, I, I don't fucking know. Everybody started calling me. Even guys who knew him. Like, Tomko was released. He called me. Brent Albright called me. Everybody. And uh, I just remember in a daze about it, and I got to Christian's house. He was in TNA at the time. And I remember watching Raw that night with Christian at his house because I was down in Florida hanging out with him. Right. And we're watching the show, and it never crossed my mind until after Regal spoke. And you go back and watch the tribute, and Regal said something to the effect of, I'm not going to comment on what happened. I'm just going to talk about what kind of prof professional Chris was in the ring. Because I think some of those guys probably either knew or suspected. And Christian looked at me and goes, dude, I think you guys just eulogized a murderer on TV. And as soon as he said that, my fucking heart dropped. I said, oh, my God. There's no way that this could have happened. And the next day I flew back to OBW and told all you guys, hey, this really stinks. We're on lockdown. Don't talk to anybody. The next day I flew back to Titan Tower. Every evidence of Chris Benoit was completely erased from Titan Tower. It can never come back. I, I can't believe that I'm still having this conversation <laughs> six or seven years later with guys who are like, oh, you know, maybe down the line, or Hall of Fame. Well, what the fuck are you talking about? He strangled his wife and killed her, and he murdered his son. My daughter is Olivia. She's four years old. I would sooner throw myself into a fucking volcano, crawl out of it, and then go throw myself in the jaws of a great white shark and kill myself twice before I would ever harm it. I, I, it couldn't have been the Chris Bound on Y that we knew, but he's obviously, if, if there's a hell... And there's got to be, because I do believe there's a heaven. There's got to be a hell, dude. He's got to be in it. I don't rationalize. I can't. I just don't know why he just didn't kill himself. That's the only thing I don't know. He did kill himself. Just, just himself. Oh, oh, oh I yeah. don't know why he just couldn't have killed only himself. Why did he have to kill Nancy? I love Nancy. She was like, she was so nice to me every time she came around. And that's just weird, dude. Little Daniel, when he used to come to the shows, Chris would tape his wrists up. And little Daniel would walk up to the guys and like try to chop them and shit. I remember laying on the ground a couple times and letting Daniel put the cross face on me. And Chris had all smiles on his face. and <sighs> It was unbelievable. I still don't get it to this day, dude. I ha I'll tell you what, man. I was fucking embarrassed of being a pro wrestler when that happened. Because as soon as that happened, every when all that bad press came out, and yeah. then the wrestler came out right after that, and all that, and holy shit. I don't know if we ever fully recovered as an industry from that, because there's still a lot of people that look at us like we're a step below circus clown, but a step above a porn star. Like, seriously. I mean, I remember sitting in the airport, and there's people reading People magazine, and his picture's on the cover about the murder. And I'm turning, and there's people just, like, shaking her look, and I'm like, oh, my God, please don't let anybody find out what I do. But Amongst the boys, what did everybody think happened? Well, I mean, after the first day, everybody knew what happened. We all knew. I still wonder to this day how much everybody knew when they knew it. I'm saying, what, what is the reasoning behind it? <laughs> Mental dementia. Snapped dementia. Craziness. Bipolarism. I think Chris might have been manic depressive too or something like that. I don't know. Uh, he had. A, I just wish he had so many people that looked up to him and loved him and liked him, man. I, maybe he was just a prideful enough guy who didn't want to reach out for help. Well, I don't fucking know. But 
that's the worst thing that's ever happened in wrestling. Right? I mean, fuck the Montreal screw job or so and so had heat because they didn't carry somebody's bag or somebody didn't buy this guy a bottle of vodka. Who knows? Right. I mean, you get heat for looking at somebody the wrong way, which is asinine. But uh, the Chris Benoit murder thing is and was and always will be the worst thing that's ever happened in wrestling. So it was the darkest period ever. I don't think he should be remembered in any way, shape, or form. Uh, his matches are on YouTube. There was a competitor like no other. He brought the best out of me. He made me realize that I belong there. When I would go in there and go 15 minutes with him on a house show and come out afterwards and be like, fuck yeah, man. I might wear a purple